Now, it has indeed been a minute since I've hopped on here and talked about Halloween Horror Nights with you all. Sorry, I didn't mean to take that long of a break. Life things got in the way. And although we don't have any official announcements regarding houses or anything really about this year's event outside of tickets and dates, there have been some interesting Halloween Horror Nights updates that have come in the past month or so. We have gotten some new speculation maps with some curious updates, including the potential return of certain houses and IPs from the past. We have an update regarding those brand new sprung tents coming to the event. And we also have some regular park updates for Universal that might have some implication as to what we could see for Halloween Horror Nights this year. It's been too long y'all, so join me as we hop into some new updates for Halloween Horror Nights 33. Now the first thing I want to talk about is some updates regarding what is speculated to come to the event courtesy of a recent speculation map from Horror Night Nightmares. I say recent, it has been out for a couple weeks, but I wanted to offer some quick thoughts on what we see. If you want to see a more long form discussion on each of these items, I did a live stream a couple weeks ago and the VOD is up on the channel right now, so I'll have that linked in the description below where I go into very, very heavy detail about these houses. Now I'd say a good half of this map is pretty similar to what we saw on the first speculation map. But for the sake of this video, I wanted to talk about some of the new things that came to the speculation map and what that could mean for maybe some returning properties, returning houses to Halloween Horror Nights this year. Just know some of the familiar subjects from the previous speculation maps, such as Ghostbusters, A Quiet Place, the potential major suites haunted house, Latin American monsters, and the unknown original make their way onto the second map, indicating that there's a pretty high likelihood of those ideas coming to the event this year. However, there are a few changes, and the first one I want to talk about is in Soundstage 22 with the symbol of the female sex wearing the Bride of Frankenstein hair. Could we be seeing the Bride of Frankenstein return to a house at Halloween Horror Nights? We did see the Bride of Frankenstein a couple years ago at HHN 30 in her own haunted house, but maybe this could be a sequel to that house or take place within that house's timeline, as that house has quite a bit of a time jump from beginning to end. Maybe we could be seeing the debut of something like Silver Scream Queens, the scare zone over in Hollywood, which featured a full set of female universal monsters, characters like the She-Wolf and Dracula's Daughter and the Invisible Woman, or maybe this has something to do with Dark Universe coming to Epic Universe, as that land is set to feature an attraction hosted by Victoria Frankenstein, an all-new character that's filling in that Dr. Frankenstein role. Or maybe it's all of these ideas combined into one big female Universal Monsters house. I would really like this. It would really shake up the Universal Monsters brand and do something different with it. And speaking of IPs that we are familiar with, I wanna jump over to Tent 4 and talk about what we're seeing in that house location. We have here the symbol of the lantern, and while this has conjured up many different theories, the most prevailing theory is that this could hint at an Insidious house coming to Halloween Horror Nights this year. Insidious has only been featured twice at Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando, once in its own solo house in 2015, and again in the first Horrors of Blumhouse in 2017. We've been talking since January of the very high High likelihood of Blumhouse making an appearance at this event. And I think Insidious is a popular enough property when it comes to Blumhouse, it's probably their most popular behind The Purge. So I'm all for Insidious, would be a good IP to add to the roster, a good one to get people through the gate, and would definitely bring the fear factor to HHN this year. So according to my view of this map, we have four IPs. Ghostbusters, A Quiet Place, Universal Monsters, and Insidious. What about the originals? Barring the three I already talked about, Latin American Monsters, Sweets Revenge, and The Unknown, we have three new originals that have appeared on this map. Now the first one I want to talk about is located here in tent number two. This is the closest to what we've already seen on the first speculation map. On the first map we had that black and white skull that myself as well as many others said could be tying back to the Tribute to Terror, last year's tribute store that was themed to an anthology comic. We don't see a skull on this second speculation map, but we do see a house with that same black and white design. Maybe this could still have some ties to Boris Schuster, false idols that we saw in last year's tribute store that was the black and white section. Now many know Boris Schuster and the legendary truth from Case Files Unearthed at HHN 30, but they had houses dating back to 2008. One being Reflections of Fear, the icon house for that year, surrounding Dr. Mary Ghana, aka Bloody Mary. However, their second appearance was themed around a haunted house, specifically the Wyandotte Estate. 
Could we be seeing a continuation of the Wyandotte Estate story all these years later with the black and white vibe of False Idols with Boris Schuster? Or maybe they're just using the black and white as sort of the gimmick or the overall aesthetic for this house, and it's themed to something completely different. Only time could tell, but I do think these ideas are connected, even if it's not exactly what we were expecting. Now, sitting just next to that icon is a new icon for tent number one, the Eye of Anubis inside of a picture frame with a rope in front of it. And this to me looks a lot like a museum display, so could we be seeing a museum as the theme for this haunted house? Maybe we could be getting a different view of Egyptian mythology, of course we're familiar with mummies through the universal monsters, but I can't tell you the last time they've done an Egyptian mythology house that hasn't been tied to the universal monsters. On the last map in this spot we had an image of a minotaur, which is a figure of Greek mythology. So what I think we could be seeing is mythology around the world told through this museum setting. However, the concept I am most interested in is what's located in tent number three. Here we just have a picture of popcorn which to me speaks the movies. Of course, we have two of the most popular Halloween Horror Nights icons, the director and Usher, tied in with movies. But I don't think we're going to be seeing them come back this year. H.R. Blood and Guts, it's a character a lot of people have been wanting to see come back to the event in a more fuller capacity. Of course, he was back at HHN 30, but just as a cameo, maybe. But what I think is most likely to come here is a sequel to a very beloved Halloween Horror Nights original. Slaughter Cinema. Now I talked about the potential for Slaughter Cinema getting a sequel all the way back in January, and I think it still stands. It's one of those houses that is a great idea, a bunch of different house concepts put together. So I think it's about time for them to tackle a Slaughter Cinema sequel, bring some new movie ideas forward, or maybe we're just diving into one of the Slaughter Cinema movies in a spin-off capacity. But again, this is all just speculation. So let me know in the comments what you think of this second speculation map. Are you liking it? Are you not? liking it let me know all your thoughts in the comments below now the next little update section is a collection of different rumors and speculations and another returning face another returning property to come back to halloween horror nights and you're probably wondering what property is it to be so special to have its own section well my friends it looks like the possibility is growing for the return of the weekend at halloween horror nights now, in Orlando, it's rumored to come back in the form of a scare zone or maybe even a bar. However, in Hollywood, according to the most recent HN Nightmare speculation map, we could be seeing the weekend come back in the form of another haunted house. And I think this is all generally very exciting. The weekend is a property I hold very near and dear to my heart. I'd say After Hours Nightmare is my favorite IP house that I've ever done. I absolutely love that house. It was my favorite house of that event. And last year, HHN Singapore did a really cool weekend mashup between After Hours and Dawn FM. So it would be great to see a mashup like that, or maybe just a full Dawn FM theme come to the American Halloween Horror Nights events. So the next update I want to talk about surrounds construction and an update regarding those new sprung tents. Recently, these photos of the new sprung tents were posted indicating that they are now up. And these photos are from a few weeks ago, so they've been up for a few weeks already. Very, very exciting. These tents look quite a bit bigger than our original sprung tents. You can see in this photo as they're kind of side by side, they're a little farther away, but you can kind of gauge the size differences here. A lot of people are discussing what's the walking path going to be for house entrances and things of that nature, regardless of what the logistics actually are. We can speculate on that forever. Regardless of what they are, we're going to be walking quite a ways to these sprung tent houses, so pack some sneakers, pack some extra socks, pack some umbrellas, because these queues are going to be long. We probably won't see any more construction until we start seeing scare zone props come into the streets. It usually happens late June, July-ish. Which wanted to let y'all know these new tents are alive. It's really exciting. Can't wait to walk through these tents in some brand new haunted houses. And now the final update I want to talk about surrounds something that's coming to Universal Studios in general, not really tied to HHN specifically, or is it? Recently, Universal announced a lot of their big summer offerings for this year, including the opening of DreamWorks Land, a new daytime parade, and a new nighttime lagoon show. And in both the new parade, titled the Mega Movie Parade, and the new lagoon show, titled Sensational, we have officially confirmed the return of Ghostbusters to the park. There have also been rumors of them being in the Tribute Store, we don't know that officially yet, we'll get more details as we get closer to that Tribute Store opening, but I think 
think this just really increases the likelihood of Ghostbusters coming to the event this year because they're already coming back to the park in the Lagoon Show. They're already getting a 16 foot Stay Puft Marshmallow Man float in the parade. Maybe also the return of the Ecto-1 in that parade too. They made an effort to let us know Ghostbusters are back. So I, again, would not be surprised if Ghostbusters is the first house to be announced for HHN, maybe alongside some of these summer offerings. And that's what we got so far. Another little roundup of HHN updates before we get something big from Universal. We are in May now. Hopefully we can get an update later on in this month, maybe towards the end of this month. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, I'm super sorry for being gone for so long. I was not expecting to be gone this long. I have plenty of videos that I've been working on in the meantime. Some Halloween Horror Nights stuff, but also a lot of Universal stuff because there's a lot going on at Universal this summer, as I alluded to. Of course, leave it down in in the comments below what your opinion is on the stuff I talked about. What are you liking? What are you maybe not liking? Let me know in the comments below. But anyways, I want to thank y'all for being so patient with me and thank you for watching this video here. If you like this video and want to see more HHN updates in this sort of roundup style or just updates in general, or want to see more videos about the past, present, and future of Universal and Halloween Horror Nights, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It lets me know that you like what I do and it allows me to do more of it. Once again, I want to thank y'all for watching this video and I'll of course see you in the next one. Stay spooky and take care everybody.